Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this episode of our app development series, we're going to learn how to play videos in our app. Since we're using Expo, we can use the Expo video player, whose GitHub page is right here. And this will help us out a lot because it's got a nice video player built in and we don't need to build it from scratch. If we scroll down a little bit on the page, we can see how to install it is to call npm install at expo slash video player. So I'll copy and paste that and come back to my project and I'm going to click project open in terminal. And in the terminal, I will paste that command and I'm going to add a dash capital S so it saves to my project. Now that the video player is installed, I'm going to come back to the documentation and see that they have an example here of how to use it. So I'm going to try out the example just to make sure that I can actually play videos in the app. So I'll copy and paste these imports and come over to my video screen and paste those in. And as you can see, we are importing video from Expo and then importing the video player from Expo slash video player. Over here in the example, we can see that we just need to add a video player component. So I'll copy and paste this, and then we'll look through the code one by one. I'm going to put this in my render function right below the render video data that we created earlier. And here we see that it takes a property called video props, and it has a property called should play. I believe that means do we want it to autoplay, and I don't want it to autoplay, so I'm going to delete that. It has a resize mode that looks very similar to the resize modes of React Native Images. It takes a source with a URI, similar to how we would add an image in React Native. And then it has the isPortrait property, which I guess has to do with the orientation of the phone, and play from position millis, I think is the starting position of the video. Here they've got a sample video, but I want to try it out with one of the videos from our API. So I'm going to come over to the API file that we have been working with. And this is the media slash mobile.xml file. And here are some media tags that we're going to get eventually. So I'll open up the first one and look down here. They've got a set of URL tags with different video formats. I'm going to copy and paste this mp4 file and use that as our sample video to make sure we can play one of these videos. So I'll replace the default URI here with the one from our API. And I'll save and refresh and see how that looks. Okay, so it looks like we've got a thumbnail of the video and when I click on it, I get a play button and this navigation bar down here. And looks like I can actually play the video. It does seem that we're getting a warning, so let's take a look at this. It says, can't call set state on an unmounted component. This is a no op. So I'm not sure exactly what's causing that warning, but that's something we can look at a little bit later. Now we're ready to update our get video data API function in order to get the actual video URLs rather than the IDs. And this is where I ran into the first real snag of the project. If I come over here to the media slash mobile.xml file, I noticed that the keyword elements within this file are self-closing, meaning they don't have a slash keyword element after them. They just have the slash and then the ending tags. And what I realized after doing a lot of testing and debugging is that the XML library that we are using doesn't support that style of element closing. And this also stresses the importance of using comments in your code because I was looking through their code for the XML parser and it isn't a whole lot of code, it's only 140 lines, but you won't find a single comment in here. So I had a pretty tough time figuring out what all of the code was doing. I did figure out a workaround for it and it's not a great workaround, but it ends up working for the project. So I think we'll stick with that. The workaround I had to do was to basically replace all of the slash and end tags with a ending keyword tag. And fortunately, the keyword elements are the only ones that end like this, which is the only reason that this workaround worked. So I'll show you how I did that. Right here is where we get the text of the response. And what I want to do is change the text before we send it to parse XML. And I want to change it in a way that makes it 
work with the XML parser. So one way of doing replacements in text is to split it by a certain character or set of characters and then join it back together with the new set. So I'll say text equals text dot split. And what I'm going to do is split by the slash ending bracket here. And that's going to give me an array of text with these taken out. And then I'm going to join and I'm going to join by what I want to replace it with, which is an ending tag and then a slash keyword element. So it's taking all of these and replacing them with these. And after we've done that, then we'll parse the XML and the XML parser that we're using will be able to handle that correctly. Now we can start gathering the video URL data. And just as a recap, what we've done is get all of the media elements from our XML file. And then we filtered out any that are not of type video. And then right here, what we're doing is mapping, creating an array of IDs from these media elements because every media element has an ID. But what we'd actually like to do is get the URL of the video. And if we look in a media element, we see that there are several URLs. The one that I want to get for this video is the MP4 file. These are different formats. And we can identify the MP4 file because it has a attribute called playback scenario of flash 1200K 640 by 360. The other thing that I want to get is the big blurb so that I can put a description above each video. And fortunately, the XML parser that we're using does strip out this C data element stuff. Okay, I'll flip back over to the code. And in here, we are doing something for each media element. And what I want to do is first get the big blurb. So I'm going to create a variable called big blurb. And I can access that by calling m.getElements by tag name and providing the tag name that I want, which is big blurb. This will give me an array of big blurbs. I've only ever seen one in each media element. So what I'm going to do is say if big blurb dot length is greater than zero, then I'm just going to take the first element out and use that. So I'll say big blurb equals big blurb zero dot value. And I'm reusing the variable here, but what that should basically do is give us this text here. Then the next thing we want to do is grab the URL that has this particular attribute. So I'm going to copy and paste this attribute for reference. And I will put it here. I'll add a comment because I just said that those were a good idea. And now we're going to get the video URL. So once again, we can create a an array and we'll call this URLs and we'll say m.get elements by tag name. We want to get URL elements and then we're going to filter those URLs. So I'll say URLs equals URLs.filter function. And we only want to return a URL with the attribute playback scenario equal to flash 1200K 640 by 360. So now we have our big blurb and our URLs. And let's just grab the first URL, kind of like what we did with the big blurb. So I'll say if URLs.length is greater than zero, then I want, well, actually let's use the ternary operator here. Let's say var video URL equals URLs.length greater than zero. If that's true, then we want to use URLs zero dot value. If it's false, we'll just set it to a blank string. And we'll do the same thing for the big blurb instead of what we're doing currently. So big blurb equals big blurb dot length greater than zero. If that's true, then we want it to be equal to this. And if it's false, it will be a blank string. All right, so now we have a big blurb and a video URL. And we can return an object with that data. So we'll return this object and it will have big blurb equal to big blurb 
and video URL equal to video URL. And you know, actually, why don't we go ahead and keep the ID there as well, because we might need an ID for the React Native list or whatever we use. So I'll grab the ID and I'll include that as well. And I was calling this variable IDs, but now it's an array of these objects. So I'll just call it video data and we will return promise.resolve video data. That was a lot of code. So let me do a quick recap of what we've done. Here we have our get video data API function where we use the media slash mobile.xml file to discover the videos. And what we do is use fetch to get the response. And since it's an XML, we need to use our XML parser to parse out that data. But since the XML parser cannot handle certain types of data, we had to first format the text a little bit to make it easier for the parser to work. Finally, when we have our data, we grab all of the media elements and we filter out the ones that are not video types. Then we go through each media element and we want to create an object with an ID, the video blurb, and the video URL. And the way we do that is we use the get elements by tag name to find the big blurb. And if there was one, then we grab the first one. Then we do the exact same thing for the video URL, except we have to do a little bit of extra filtering to make sure that we only get this type of URL. And finally, we grab the ID and we pass that back as an object here, which creates an array of those objects, one element or one item in the array for each media tag. And finally, we are returning that in the form of a promise. Back in our video screen, this is where we were actually calling the function right here. And we were setting it to our video data state. Then when we rendered our video data, we were just displaying the video data, which was previously just a bunch of IDs, but now we have objects. So we're going to show that data in a different way. First, just as a way of testing that we've got all of the data, let's print out the video URLs as text. So I'm going to comment out the text of the current video data that we've been displaying. And instead, I'm going to return this.state.videodata.map. And you can use map to return a, an array of components, which will all be displayed whenever, wherever you call this function. So we're going to return a text. And since it's an array, every element here will need a key. So we'll set the key equal to the video.id. Why don't I change this to video here? And we want the value of the text to be equal to video.videourl. And remember, these properties are coming from the return object in our API function. I'll save and refresh, and hopefully we get a list of video URLs. Looks like we've got a list of video URLs. Now, instead of displaying the video URLs, what we actually want to do is display a video player for each video. And we also want to display the big blurb text next to each video. So inside of our map function, we'll need to make this a little bit more complex. Let's start by returning a view that can contain everything. And we will give the view our new key of video.id. And let's create a text element that displays video dot big blurb. And we'll go ahead and add a style there. So we'll say style equals styles dot big blurb. And we'll come down to the styles and add a blank style here, which we will update a little bit later. And then just below that, we want to add our video player. So I'm going to copy and paste this video player here. And for the source, instead of hard coding the URL, what we're going to do is use video.video .video URL. And I will remove this video player here. 
Okay, let's save and refresh and see if that works. All right, and it looks like we now have a list of video players with a big blurb above each one of them. And I also noticed that I cannot scroll this screen, and the reason for that is because we're putting everything in a view, and if you want it to be scrollable, it needs to be a scroll view. So I'll change that, and we also need to import scroll view from React Native. And while the screen is up, I'm going to add a little bit of styling here. The first thing I want to do is add some container styles. So I'll give my scroll view a style equal to styles.container. And all I want to do for that is give some padding of five so that it's not touching the edge of the screen. But on second thought, I'm not going to do that because I do want the video to touch the edge of the screen. So I'm just going to add some padding to my big blurb text here. I want the padding horizontal to be 10 and the padding vertical will also make 10. Save and refresh that and see how it looks. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Um, the only thing I'd really like to change is I would actually prefer if the big blurb was below the video, so I'm going to swap the text here and the video player. Just put the text down there at the bottom. And I also need to test to make sure I can play these videos. Fly ball well hit Ender. Okay, looks like it's working. I had some error when I tried to do full screen, but I think that's because I'm not in landscape mode. Um, and then I can scroll through here. And I'm pretty happy with that so far. I actually think I'm going to end the video series here. My ultimate goal was to be able to play these videos without having to watch advertisements, and I consider that goal to be met. So the last thing I'm going to do is remove the test and settings tabs here. So I will go into my navigation folder and into the main tab navigator file, and I'm just going to comment out the test and settings pages. And like I said, that will be the end of this video series, but if there is a particular feature that you'd like me to cover, feel free to leave a comment in the video or send me an email and I'll consider covering that in a future video. I really hope you learned something from watching some or all of these videos and thanks for watching.